<clears throat> we'll start with a quiet time. This is our Wednesday night channeling number 200. Take a deep breath. Relax your body. Quiet the mind. And bring your attention to this present moment and this place in consciousness. Allow yourself to be here now and let us put out our feelers to be aware of all those who are with us tonight in spirit. There are many who have come to learn just as we have. Our teachers and our guides are here. And many higher beings are aware of our class tonight and are lending their love and the Father's love. So let this be an open, clear, clean channel. Thank you, Father. Our title tonight is called The Illusion of Time. Time, as you think of it, has no meaning in the realms eternal. Any measurement that might be um, considered here is soul's growth. If you incarnate in the physical 10 or 100 times with no growth in spirit or soul's growth, it is as if it were non-existent. What is life all about? It is about many things. In any sense of measurement, it is growth to greater understanding, upward movement in consciousness. In your language, we could say expanding the quality of life that moves you above and beyond the illusions of your plane. It has been said that time is money. When you put all your energies and thought to gathering more material wealth, you take the flavor, fragrance, and spirit from your living. Learning excuse me, leaving you with dullness, fatigue, and boredom. Life is to be lived with joy, love, and the zest and gratitude to experience life. That's as far as my writing cut. <coughs> Good evening, my friends. This is Gidan coming to you from these realms of love and light. It is with great joy that I greet you this evening and feel the love that comes from you. 
I would ask you to send love to all the invisibles around you, so-called, to all those in other groups like yours around your planet and all over the universe. For there are many who gather together in small groups to learn more, to bring down to the lower dimensions the higher truths that you need to weed out the distortions that your plane continually brings in to your, your thoughts. You have the opportunity to accept these distortions or to let them go. Elowa is here this evening and would bring the message for you. God bless you, my dear ones. It is a, with great gratitude that I come into your midst with God's love in such great abundance. As you learn to continue to be a channel for divine love to flow through, remember that it is the only power, the only source that is. For God is love, and love is God, and God and love are life. You are love and life and God. Continue to remember this. Continue to saturate your thoughts with this understanding so that you might move above and beyond the illusions of your plane and especially the illusion of time. As you are trapped in a cycle of time that you continually uh, wake up to in the morning if you work days and leave your body in the evening. And this continues to happen over and over. And you are go to work at a certain time and class at a certain time. This <clears throat> imprints on your patterns of thinking the belief in time, I would have you to consider, even though you do have to go ahead with your play as you have started it, to consider thinking as you go through your experience of time and space uh, in your play to think beyond this. And this is asking a lot of you, I know. It is asking you <clears throat> to go against uh, the play and the main uh, thrust of your play on this stage, the belief in duality. It is important for you to be free from these lower dimensions to rise above this misconception and to do it while you are still going through the play. This you have been told many times. It is good to be reminded. It is good to learn to realize that time is an illusion and many on your planet now have um, gathered in their consciousness and in their thoughts that there's a shortage of supply. As the writing said, many have considered time is money. And so many have realized that they have the time now but not so much money. There are those 
who have an abundance of money because they have the consciousness of abundance. And you, as you move through your play, whether you are short on supply, material wealth or not, be not concerned and be not concerned about the world and the conditions of the world because it is the way the props are set for your play. It is an experience. Continue to remember this. Continue to remember that when you are jolted a little bit, or we used to call it nudged uh, when we first started channeling with the group that was called the Oasis people, um, we used the phrase, uh, give you a little nudge, or an inspiration that to realize that this is not real. And when you become concerned about the illusions, then you are believing in them. When your, all of your time and energies are put to gathering material wealth, and I'm not speaking of this group, I'm speaking of the masses on your planet, for this is the God that most worship on your plane is material wealth that in your country has come down to money, stocks and bonds and so forth. This is what most give value to. And now it is time to realize that this is not the most valuable thing in life and that it does not sustain you. You cannot depend on it to keep you afloat, shall we say, in the sea of life on this physical plane. Your material wealth and money are the medium that you have used for exchange on your physical plane. And there is nothing wrong in having an abundance of material wealth and money. It is only when you make it your God and that you allow the um, lack of it to bring in the fear then do you allow the illusions to control your life. As you grow into a higher consciousness, as you move higher in spiritual understanding, you begin to realize that it matters not what is taking place on your physical plane. It matters not which way the play is going or which way the stock market is going or how much interest you get from your money in the banks. It does matter, my dear ones, how you react to it. It does matter how you feel about it. It does matter that you learn to love unconditionally no matter what is happening to or around you. These are the things that are of value, of spiritual value. These are the things that you came to learn. And you yourself have set the props. Each one connected with this physical plane, and there are many more than just the ones in the physical, that have set up the props before you incarnated, that have brought about the conditions that you find on your plane now that are involved, and you are setting up 
the props for those who come after you. It is a continuous flow of experience. And I want to draw your attention to the idea that I am using the word experience and place in consciousness instead of time. For my dear ones, time is an illusion and experience is what you came to have on this plane. Now, time and space and the belief in duality is part of the experience that you came to have. It is also part of your growth to learn to rise above this false belief, to learn to go through the play and play your part, but not be trapped in your part. This is the important thing to understand. When you get trapped into a certain routine, into a certain pattern, and a belief system that is of this physical plane called illusion, then your life is, <coughs> shall we say, um, moving, but your growth in understanding is standing still are going backwards. There is no standing still. I am correcting myself. For many times I have said you cannot sit on a fence. You're either going forward or backward. So as you go through this experience called time and space and duality, learn to realize that it is just a play and it seems to some in your minds that I've said this many times to you. It is also important that you hear it until you can live it. It is important for your growth to be able to be in the world, but not of it, as the Master said. And these things I'm speaking of tonight comes down to that phrase, be in the world, but not of it. Be not of the illusions of this world, but go ahead and play your part because you agreed to do this for the opportunities that it brings to you to develop your spiritual muscles, shall we say. As you exercise your choice of thoughts, your choice of feelings and moods and attitudes about this physical plane, what is happening on this plane and what is happening in your life, then you either go forward or backward in your growth. This class tonight is not intended to put pressure upon you and I do not mean to have you to take it so seriously that you cause tension in yourself, but to call attention to your, the truth that life is, period. Life is. It is not all of these different things that boil down to illusion. It just is. And when you understand this, then you eliminate guilt, you eliminate self-condemnation, you eliminate judgment of yourself and others, and you understand that you do not have to be disturbed about the play. You do not have to be disturbed about a movie when you go to a movie. Maybe you get caught up in it, but afterwards you realize, after all, it was just a movie, a story. And this is the same with this, my dear ones. Time 
is an illusion, but the experience of life is an onward flow, and life flows onward and upward. Life is expanding into more of itself, and when we try to stand still in this flow of life, we crystallize in our bodies, in our thoughts, in our emotions, all of our finer bodies. And the example in your book, The Bible, was Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillow of salt. This may have been an actual fact. I would rather think that it was symbolic. It was, it is an example for you to realize that you need not look back. You need not be concerned about what has happened in the past or what might happen in the future. All you need to do is think about today. And if you have enough supply for today, if you have food and clothing, this is enough. For you know not what tomorrow might bring. And even when it comes, my dear ones, it is today. So, as we talk about the subject, let us remember that Time is an illusion, and to realize that you may be caught up in this illusion and the belief of this illusion of time and the duality concept much more than you may realize. I would have you consider watching yourself, especially this next week, and catching yourself when you may be thinking of the past or what might happen tomorrow or sometime in what you think of as the future. These are non-existent, my dear ones. These are illusions. They are not true in the sense of eternity. Eternity is here and now, this present moment. Most on your plane think of it as eternity, as some time in the future, way off, up in the sky, or where, whatever. But you see, my dear ones, you're in eternity now, and you always will be in eternity now, because now is the only experience that you have. There is um, something I could say about the experiences that you have brought forth into your now, the memory of these experiences. When you bring forth the memory of negative experiences, you are clogging up your channels and the life force it is difficult for it to get through and you stagnate and sometimes you become ill in body, also in mind and in your thinking. When you are overly concerned about your future, then you are in the height of illusion because life is ever expanding and bursting into more of itself. And I tell you, my dear ones, that your experience on the physical plane, the less than 2% of life is so small relative to the total of life that when you allow just this to exist 
in your consciousness, you are missing so much. Yes, I know you have to go through your play and play your part, and it seems like that time drags on and is it takes such a long time to accomplish this or to accomplish that. But I tell you, my dear ones, if you stop and consider, right now, this moment, you can be joyful, you can be loving, you can love yourself, and you can be a channel for God's love to flow through. That is all that is important. Yes, it is important that you have the play to work with, that you have these experiences because you have created them to learn from. But the thing to learn is to realize the truth, the eternal truth, that now eternity is, and that is all the time there is, is the present moment. As you learn to live in this present moment, then you raise your consciousness to a much higher level. You expand your awareness and your other senses come into play and you begin to understand so much more about life and the reality of life. As you learn to drop away the past or any concepts of what the future might be and live in the present moments, you are living eternity and you are living it to a great, great abundance It might be a good exercise for those in this room to practice living just in the present, to practice this week and the next week and so on, but especially this week that you think of as coming toward you to live as you go through your experiences, what you call a day, in the present moment. You plan your day, but you plan it in the present. And you move in to your plans, but it is always in the present that you move into. Life is experience after experience after experience. And you have <clears throat> turned this as the word time. And as you get the two mixed up in your thinking, then do you misunderstand what life is all about? Life is not all about the lower dimensions or the illusions of the lower dimensions. Life is about living to the fullest this moment with joy, with peace, with a feeling of well-being, with love in your heart for yourself and all of God's creations. This is what life is about. And this is in the present moment. Let us stop at this time and give you opportunity to express your thoughts, and to ask questions. There can be many questions about this subject tonight. I have a misunderstanding I would like to clear up. Yes. We get old 
and we age. And we look at it as years of time. How are we to justify our idea of getting old and wrinkled if there is no time? An event must occur in some frame of reference. You do not age, my dear one. Your body ages because of the negative thoughts that you flow through your body, not just the physical body, but the bodies uh, from the lower levels. There has been civilizations, many civilizations, where you did not age, where your bodies did not age, because you had reached the place in consciousness where you knew the truth and lived with joy and love the greater part of your experience. So realize that eternity is now. You are using this vehicle called the physical body to manifest through and it can tell you a lot about your thoughts. When you find yourself, your body, should I say, growing old and wrinkled and um, disabled, realize that this is a part of the play that you have set up. It may be what you think of as karma from the past and other lifetimes. It may be just this incarnation. You could stop the aging process if you could think only positive, constructive, loving thoughts. You could reverse the aging process and go back to the time not of your very young time, but the time that you considered the, the maturity of maybe 30 years, 35 years, or whatever you consider the best time of your incarnation. Do you understand this? I think so, but only in part because we cannot uh, conceive of ideas beyond our words to express. Beyond your words to express? Uh, well, let's think of the words that you can conceive of. The words of joy and peace and love. Eliminating anything that goes against the grain of life. This you were taught in your basic classes, but of course it was just a beginning place. Some of you started here with no um, thought of this at all, or very little, and some have studied before. Your way of thinking is the prism that brings about the physical uh, conditions in your life. And there is no getting around this one thing, your thoughts. You choose all of your thoughts. Now, let's go back to your statement 
and try to explain what you meant about what you said, about things beyond your comprehension. Well, it's difficult for us to understand time not existing, but it is very easy for us to understand holding ourselves in the present and holding loving, constructive thought. Yes. The um, <clears throat> time and space concept is dual. You understand this, do you not? Yes. And good and evil are duality. In true reality, there is no duality. This is what we are speaking of this evening, is duality. And when you understand that there is no uh, vengeful God that is keeping track of everything you do or think and calling you to task for it, when you understand that God only loves you and that it is only you who condemn yourself, then if you can eliminate the judgment of yourself, then you can realize that life is To your way of thinking and the way that you have been conditioned, I know that it is difficult for you to comprehend this to its fullest extent, but it must be brought to your attention before you can rise above the illusions of this wor world that you live in, that you have conceived to be. Each one of you who brought this planet into being and who brought the conditions and everything on this planet into being because you did this, you are co-creators with God and you are now continuing to sustain the, and this planet and the conditions of this planet as it is. And each one of you are adding to the conditions of this planet, whatever they are. There are uh, those who have moved higher in consciousness who are living more the life of love than the masses, and they are helping to keep the balance of your planet so that it, it does not go completely berserk, as you might say. But you are still dealing with the concept of duality. Can you add more to your thoughts about this? Well, I think you've expressed it well. Being things that happen that we think may be good may turn out to be not so good in our elusive way of referring to it. Some of the things that happen to us that are not so good in our original thinking turn out to be a blessing in disguise. So anything that happened is merely an event to be contemplated, nothing more. It is... Um, it depends on how you contemplate it also. And your experience with life is how you think about it. That is very simple, but also very profound, because each one of you are continually 
adding your thoughts to the ethers and molding and shaping the conditions of this planet as it is. Can you see this in your mind? Each one of you, I am asking, can you comprehend that your planet, your plane, is what it is according to the masses of thoughts that are continually flowing into the ethers. When you realize this, then you understand that that's the way you and all the others have set up the props on your plane. Uh, here is another thought that you and others like you who have come together in these small groups around the planet and other planets need to consider. You do not really live on this planet. You do not live in your physical bodies. You live in your consciousness. And your consciousness is how you perceive life to be. Uh, I, I made a misstatement there. The uh, part of your consciousness that you use to experience is how you perceive life to be. Some on your plane perceive life to be hell and some perceive life to be close to heaven and all degrees in between. Does this make sense to you? It certainly does. Yes. Are there other questions or thoughts that you would have this evening? I have a I think it's the statement at the same time that it's a question and because if I have a, an understanding too that the, every cell in our bodies inside and out carries memories which also contribute to thoughts whether we're aware of them or not whether they're in our, our, our conscious mind or we're in our subconscious mind and sometimes when we think we're raising our consciousness, we are, but we're still not dealing, we're only dealing with those conscious thoughts that we're aware of and not all the other thoughts that we have. And that's why sometimes we feel like, well, why am I not making any progress? Why am I not regenerating my body? Why is it aging if I, I am doing those positive living in the now type things? Let us consider what you have said, um, and I do not mean to condemn you, my dear one. I say this in love, that in your statements you're putting value to the physical things. It is not really that valuable whether you, your body ages or not. It is not valuable to how long you live in this body. It is valuable as to what you learn while you are here. I was merely explaining why your body does age. And I understand that, but I thought part of that was the memories that are already in our body cells. Yes. This is true. Okay, and that's what I was trying to get at. Not so much that I think that it's valuable to be young because I think part of the raising of the consciousness is that, yes, you will be generated. That's just a, an effect of the cause. Yes. You see, you're also dealing with the mass consciousness of this plane. Whether you uh, realize it or not, unless you have reached that point in consciousness where you 
no longer let things that happen around you affect you. you the mass consciousness of everyone, or should I say thoughts, uh, are impending upon everyone as they let it. When you have your thoughts in a loving, beautiful, joyful place, then the negative thoughts that are prevalent on your plane cannot enter in. There was an example that I once gave. Think of yourself as an island of light and all around you is the darkness or the negative thoughts. And as you continue to keep your thoughts positive, constructive, and loving, then the light, island of light that you are, is not penetrable. But when you allow one negative thought to come in, then you have opened the door and it comes in and brings all of its cousins and relatives with it. When you remember to immediately send God's love into this and cancel it out and go back to your positive, constructive thoughts, then you've closed the door. But when you allow yourself to give this negativity consideration and dwell upon it, then you have trapped yourself for a while until you sit down and become quiet and allow yourself to get back to the thinking that you want, to the type of feelings that you want the attitudes, the moods. Does this make sense to you? Yes, it does. Yes. I guess the other part of the question, of my question too, is that then as you raise your consciousness, your vibrations get higher, does that also affect the memory of your body cell? Yes, it does. And you see the statement that the Master made, if thine eye be single, thine whole body shall be filled with light. And what did he mean by if thine eye be single? In other words, if you keep your thoughts in a positive, constructive, and loving way continuously, then you are filled with light. But the moment that you let down your guard, or that is not a very good way to put it. The moment that you allow yourself to give in to the negativity of this plane, then does the darkness come in and disrupt your island of light. The process of growth from where you are uh, and I'm speaking of this group and other groups like it, who are striving to grow, who are, are moving forward in their growth, there is a time that you raise your consciousness and then you fall back and then you raise it again and you fall back again. Be not concerned about this. I think you call this vacillating but realize that you are not yet perfect on this plane and you have not perfected the lessons on this plane. And when you do, then you will no longer need to be on this plane. You will be on a plane that is much better and lighter and brighter the concern and guilt and self-condemnation is very destructive 
to your onward uh, movement of soul's growth. Try not to allow this to come in to your thoughts. If you make a so-called mistake or go against the grain of life, immediately send God's love into it and immediately turn your thoughts away from it to thoughts that are beautiful, that are in harmony with the onward movement of life growth. Are there other questions or thoughts this evening? Yes, I have a question. Thanks for coming. Um, as I understand it, without trying to imply time, last week we talked about the lessons that we would have to come back and learn at when we reincarnated. And we did, talked about um, sitting down or uh, coming together with the karmic lords and determining what it was that we needed to learn during this incarnation. Am I on the right track to understand that when we come back in, into the physical plane that we will be here the appropriate length of time for no other reason that I can't think of any other way to ask the question um, to, a, to have all the opportunities that we had sat out, sat down and discussed with the karmic lords. Yes, uh, this is true, but there's more to it than that. Um, you do make a decision as to when you incarnate and when you discarnate before you are born into the physical. Uh, but it all, everything is relative to how you handle your opportunities that you have set up for yourself. Now you can uh, move forward and uh, learn all the lessons that you planned to learn in this incarnation in a short time, as you think of it, in a short uh, span of experiences, and then move in to another span of experiences that you would call a lifetime and move forward much more rapidly while you're still in the same body. Everything is individual and everything is weighed uh, with the lords of karma and with your friends, your guides and teachers as to what you as an individual that is different than anyone else need for your growth and in, in your place of consciousness. So there is no set rule for this but there's general guidelines, you might say. And uh, this was, has been so uh, since the cycle of, of uh, death and birth, our incarnation and reincarnation was set up. Does this help your understanding? Yes, thank you very much. Yes. There are so many subtleties in uh, all of these things. And from your surface point of view, it is difficult for you to see these. Sometimes when you uh, are maybe in a quiet time or in, a, in meditation or maybe in the busiest time of your day, you may receive enlightenment and see and understand some of these things, especially when you are making the effort to move forward in consciousness. But for the most part, you do not see the whole picture as the Lords of Karma do and as your teachers and guides uh, are helped through the Lords of Karma. They serve a very special uh, 
place in your experiences in these lower dimensions, there will come a place in consciousness when we will no longer need the Lord of Karma as we have put a label on them because we will have risen above the law of karma. But until then, it is important that we listen to the inner guidance, that we learn to discern that inner voice that tells us this is the better path and follow this guidance. There are many times when we hear, but we do not follow the guidance. And it is the little self and the stubbornness of the subconscious, you might say, that we allow uh, ourselves to be distracted from this inner guidance and from hearing it. It is a very precious thing to have this inner guidance, to be able to hear, to have, to receive the impressions and to be grateful for them and to follow them. The more you follow the inner guidance and the more you are grateful for them, the more you open the doors for them to come in to you, into your conscious awareness. And you have this is so much more valuable than anything that you could have on the physical plane. Okay, thank you. Are there other thoughts or questions this evening? I have another question or comment. I was recently reading that when you are, let's say, uh, sad or depressed, that, that you were talking about the darkness and that hangs over the planet. I also understand that the same, same darkness or brainness covers our lighter bodies when we are depressed, or allow ourselves to be depressed or negative. Yes. And that when we are joyful, it cleanses that uh, dull kiln off the higher body. This is true. And it is wise to ask God to cleanse you of all past negation many times throughout the day and send love unlabeled or wherever you want. And to make this a pattern, um, because it is so easy for you to unconsciously slip in to these uh, moods that are not conducive to joy and peace and happiness. Your subconscious has ruled you in many ways for a long time and still it is there and the more you become aware of this the more uh, quickly you can bring about the ability to get the subconscious to working with your conscious awareness. If I seem a little faulting tonight, it is, uh, pay no attention to it, it is uh, Donald's channel that is a little uh, difficult to come through. It was decided at first that Kadan would um, bring the message, but when the group gathered, uh, your desire was that I bring the message, and so I 
uh, decided to. Did this uh, help your understanding on this? Yes, it did. Thank yes. You very much. Yes, this is such a subtle thing to, uh, when you <coughs> allow yourself to uh, slip into this, there, there's many times that you're not aware that you're doing it until maybe you're into it for a period of what you think of as time. And then if you get into it too far, it is much better to stop and quiet yourself and use whatever tools that work for you and allow yourself to come back to that peace of mind and that joyful feeling. You are so fortunate, my dear ones, to have this guidance. There are so very few on your plane relative to the numbers that do have it. Many, many more are opening to it. At this particular uh, place in consciousness, your planet has come to, uh, shall we say, a place that it is confused. The masses of your people are confused about the supply and the material things and are overly concerned. And it is that we ask you to consider sending extra love into the situation, helping to bring about a better balance overall. There will come a place in consciousness where your planet will know the abundance of life. And some of you may experience this in your incarnation. Know that everything is falling into place as it should. And it is falling into place according to the thoughts that are dominant on your plane and according to the, shall we say, uh, this is a mundane way of putting it, but the power play, and it is not a very good example uh, to explain in a spiritual way, but it is a good example to help you to understand. The negative power of thoughts are one side and the positive and loving thoughts are another. And they vacillate back and forth. And even in yourselves, you vacillate. And so the masses on your plane uh, bring about the conditions in your life on this plane according to which is more powerful at that particular place in consciousness. And this, and at this time, when your uh, world is concerned with the economy more than anything else, I, I should not say all of your world, but the, the majority of your world is concerned over this one thing and as the media talks about it, and as all consider it, and the fear comes in, then it freezes the flow of your currency. It freezes the flow of your supply, because those who hear it and believe in it are afraid to, uh, shall we say, spend the money that they have. And this is what happened in what you call the crash of 29. Everything stood still because 
it was just fear. There was just as much supply the day before the crash, the day after the crash, as the day before the crash. But it was the fear that stopped the flow of the life force that brought about the abundance or the lack of it. Are there any other questions or thoughts tonight? Let us then adjourn for this class knowing that as we learn to live in the present moment with love, with joy, with peace, and with gratitude, we are living life to its fullest as we know it. Practice this, my dear ones, over and over until you are the master. God bless each and every one of you, and good evening. Well, it seems a little halting tonight. It was a little yeah. peak toward the end more than at the beginning. Oh. Uh, a little. Bye bye. I wish I could do as well. Well, you can. Oh, much better. It takes courage. To um, it, uh, like Sharon McLean said, out on a limb. You put yourself out on a limb when you do something like this. And when you first begin, <clears throat> when you're working with yourself, why uh, it's not you know you have your own contact personally. Why well, it's one thing, but to get in front of a group and be a channel is something else. And well, my are this body's energy are not in alignment and it doesn't uh, it's hard for them to get through i was reading an article just recently and you meant you were the, we were dealing with time and space and the illusion that it is there was an article recently that i was reading in light magazine and that was the the woman was talking about the fact that she just decided to give up time and aging and therefore, in meditation, she talked to the, it, and I guess in her higher self as has learned to talk to her various glands that hold the memory of A.T. Mm -hmm. And that they, she felt like they thanked her for releasing them from the, they were complying with our wishes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And they were grateful to be released from that because that was not their true nature to age. Yeah, that's not. Very interesting, all right. As the body regenerates itself right. ever so often, anyway. Could, could, do you have that article at home or something? It's in the Light magazine. The, you need to find it in all. Do you have the it? The Arizona Light? Light? Yeah, the Arizona Light. He doesn't send me uh, no, the no, one no. copy. Uh, the metaphysical store carrying them. They're free. The bookstore. Oh, really? Yeah. It's yeah. like a, a newsletter. Oh. John sends me the Omegas, about six copies of it, but I haven't gotten uh, Jackie to send me. Yeah, the February issue is out. Mm -hmm. And then so when... I need to get all of the article <laughs> right away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting. It's kind of ironic to, to uh, have a, a lesson on the fact that time doesn't exist. I mean, you sit here watching your watch so that the tape doesn't run out. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need a... Um, Automatic reverse tape player. Yeah. A tape stretcher. Donald always relied this well. Yeah, I think you're the, getting close to it. They always say Donald is concerned about the tape. So I think <laughs> the subconscious, uh, 
when you let it keep strict track of time. And our, uh, our medium just graduated here recently that did the blindfold billet. Uh, oh, Dr. Ireland? Yeah. And uh, he demonstrated this. When he was doing his act while he, he says now at 6.37 and whatever time it was, about a half a dozen times, at least serious. Thank you. That was Taki Tula, friend of mine. Had her um, sister and mom just graduated recently. And prior to that, she had been real upset about it. But when she did finally cross over, apparently it was a very um, cleansing experience, the transition of it, the time period that they had to spend with the woman before she graduated. Mm -hmm. And we got to talking about that, and I said, you know, what I think about is I'm looking forward to when I wake up from this illusion. Yeah, I am it's sure. Dream. And I'm in no hurry to leave it because I have things to do, but I'm also looking forward to waking up. Yeah. And that's, that's the right attitude is to not try to hurry it up because we want to accomplish what we came to accomplish and as much as we can, but it is a graduation thing and a time of joy, well, great happiness. And the Irish uh, have a good idea, having a wake and celebrating. Mm -hmm. Good excuse to get drunk, too. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder if, if when you wake up on the other side, if you're supposed to pinch yourself. <laughs> oh, you still feel. Has he gotten to read? Has he gotten to read that book that's in the leaf forms to see us for about the soldiers of World War One? Heavenly Ways Earth graduates, you know, that's the... Oh, oh yeah, there's a lot of insight that he has been wondering. Really? What happens to read? Yeah, you, you can take a copy of it. Great, uh, great. It's in manuscript. It's out of print for many years, but... Heavenly Ways of Earth graduates. It's, uh, it describes the love of God's substance and really goes into sending love and how valuable it is. And, and also, I'm doing another book that I just got to read by Dr. Stark. I don't know if you've heard of it, not Dr. Stark. I don't know. He wrote a book. He died in 1989 and he had written the book. Actually, I'm not real positive that he wrote it because it doesn't say that he wrote it. But it is all about crossing over and mm -hmm. the things that he's doing in what he called borderland and then the different mm -hmm. level that he goes to visit and how his you know they help people as they graduate yes with the different you know aspects that they need to, uh help with that they need healing or whatever yeah there's several books in there that uh, are out of print that you guys don't enjoy in other words, about life in the world unseen. And it's about a priest who uh, had written several books while he was in the physical, and he got over there and realized that most of it wasn't true. So he is in, compelled to get a medium for writing. He wrote two books, really. And, uh, so it's, and he really goes into fine detail about what it's like. Interesting. <laughs> The second one I think is more beautiful is called More About Life and the World on Selena. When it first came out, or when I became aware of them, why the, you couldn't buy just one of them, it came in a set of two. And uh, they were very enlightening for me at that time. Shall we hold hands? Let us think of coming together in the physical by holding hands and bringing down the spiritual understanding that's been given to us tonight. Bringing down the light and the love, more peace and joy with these great things of light bring to our circle. And let us send God for up to all those in the balcony who have come from 
many dimensional thriller as we have. Her state of love going around this strong painting will lift them, building up in power, filling this room, spreading out over the symbol, and covering this planet, and going out from the whole universe. Those think of God's love and by head of us, and of the sweet can try every thought, word, and deed, and every situation of every encounter. And let us practice to speak living in the Loma. They get peace, filled with joy, with love in our hearts. Thank you, Father. Yes, the soft vibration. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. my wife first. She appreciate it. Yeah, I don't. That is not under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. My non three folks are not. That guy. We're running in the pale. Oh, yo, we're fine by all you eat. Let's go to the end. The benefit. But to be to the infinite. I know what I think it's real. So I can make them be there. Yeah, a lot. Yes, but I mean, I do see it again. And you know, a lot of it. And you're Oh, I'm sorry. That doesn't exist. Yeah.